Thank you for joining with me today on Side by Side. As we continue to think about Proverbs, we want to look at the core question of our words today. In these last 21 chapters of Proverbs, I'm not proposing to go through them chapter by chapter or verse by verse, but I want to just pick out a few themes. So today's theme is one that you'll find scattered throughout the rest of Proverbs, and it's the theme of words. How much words, how many words, how powerful our words are, how dangerous our words are. Researchers tell us that people use between 15 and 20,000 words a day. And just to put the record right, men speak as many words as women, which is, I think, very true, and some most likely more. But when we think about those words, we know that of all of those 15 to 20,000 words, it only takes one of them or two of them to change the course of our day or the course of somebody's life. Proverbs says this in 10 verse 11, The words of the godly are a life-giving fountain. The words of the wicked conceal violent intentions. It's not a bad exercise to take a highlighter if you allow yourself to and go through Proverbs 10, 11, 12, right through for several chapters and just underline all the various Proverbs that have to do with words. I'll give you another couple of illustrations. Go on down to verse 19 of chapter 10. Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. The words of the godly are like sterling silver. The heart of a fool is worthless. The words of the godly encourage many, but fools are destroyed by their lack of common sense. And so on. You'll find words, the whole idea of words and language, so much a part of what is being said here. And it is really something so crucial for us to think about, isn't it? Because you think about something like driving. I was just trying to think of the analogy. I was out in the car this morning. Well, when I'm in the car, I've got speed limits to guide me and control me. I've got boundaries. That is, I've got a white line in the middle of the road that I must not cross over unless I'm overtaking and so forth. I've got markers for the end of roads and the start of roads and crossroads. And what's the point? The point of all of this is to prevent and avoid a crash. All of these limits, rules, boundaries are there to help me. And yet, if you think about it, our words can become the very thing that causes greater disasters than some car crashes and so forth. We've got to build around our words, limits, boundaries, guidelines. It's interesting that the psalmist says in one place, he says, set a watch or a guard over my mouth. And isn't that a very, very important thing? In fact, I was thinking that that should most likely be the first words out of our mouths every day. Not that it is mine, but I'm speaking this to myself as well as anybody else. Oh Lord, set a watch or a guard over my mouth that I be careful what I say, or if anything at all, for sometimes it would be better to say nothing. So think about words. Proverbs 25.11 says, Like apples of gold in settings of silver is a word spoken at the right time. That idea of the right time could also be understood in this way. A more literal translation of that verse is, Apples of gold in settings of silver or carvings of silver is a word spoken into its circumstances. Or in other words, a word that really benefits the hearers. I think about the words. I think about famous speeches. Abraham Lincoln is said to have his most famous speech, which is called the Gettysburg Address, which can be read, I think, in three minutes. And he wrote it in a very brief time. But it has become an iconic speech for history, for what it said. Full of appreciation and kindness, but genuine and sincere speaking to the people. Martin Luther King in Washington on the day of the Great March. I have been to the top of the mountain. I've looked over. I've seen the promised land. There's just a few words that transformed the vision of a whole society of people. So we know that words, when they are spoken at the right time and in the right way, can be really profound and powerful and 
benefit people, the hearers. Think about how words otherwise can become weapons. People talk about they could cut you to the, they could cut you in two with one word. Some people talk about people they've got lips like an Alsatian. Now those are phrases that say it all, don't they? Words can be so cutting and so hurtful, and we know how to use the words in that way about people. But then you think about the words of Jesus. Think about he who is described as one who, when he spoke, no one spoke like this man. There was authority, there was beauty, there was uniqueness to the words of Jesus, always appropriate. And then, of course, there was silence. Sometimes Jesus chose to say no words, as a sheep before the shearers is dumb, so he did not open his mouth. There were times whenever he was confronted by people asking and demanding all sorts of things, like Herod the king, that says he did not open his mouth at all. He wouldn't even acknowledge casting his words before someone who would devalue him and would treat them as of no weight whatsoever. So we think about this statement at the beginning then. The words of the godly are a life-giving fountain. So as you and I are thinking about this day, how can we use our words to be a life-giving fountain, giving life to people? Well, I think about words of kindness, first of all. Now, Joan and I were just chatting there over, over lunchtime. I'm just recording this just after lunch today. And we were just chatting about how few words of kindness exist in the public square, in the political realm today. There are very, very few people that I've heard, seldom ever heard or seen a kind act done by one politician to another, and even from politicians to people. It seems really sad that our public images are so lacking in kindness and so full of other types of words. But that's not to condemn the politicians, because I think that's true throughout the whole of society. We don't live in a very kind culture today. But you know, it takes very little to say a word of kindness to someone. It can be please, thank you, sorry. It can be a little word of encouragement. It can be a little word of affirmation about something they've done. It doesn't take very much, but what a difference it makes to them. And of course, surely Christians above everybody else should be known for their words of kindness. And sadly, I'm not so sure that that's true in our culture today. Words of kindness can really bring life to people. Words, uh, I think, of apology. When do we apologize to people, acknowledge to people that we, we did something that we shouldn't have or maybe that we didn't even intend? That can be a very powerful, very, very powerful thing. And we don't always have to say the words. You know, sometimes we can write the words down, write them on a page. They have very powerful effect. If you open up a page and read it, someone is saying something to you. Words that can bring life. Words of repentance. Words of forgiveness. Wouldn't that be marvelous? Think about the life that that might breathe into a relationship where someone can say, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Uh, would you please forgive me. Wow, that's a powerful thing, isn't it, to say that? But that can totally transform any relationship. Yes, we really do need to learn every day as we start out in our world, Lord, set a watch over my mouth. But then knowing that deep down, that it's out of the fullness of the heart that the mouth speaks, what we really need to be praying is, Lord, change my heart. Change my heart. Reshape my heart by your grace so that my words will reflect the heart of Christ and that my words will truly be like apples of gold in settings of silver. What a wonderful word to have. So as you go and share some of your 15 or 20,000 words today, why don't you pray that prayer often throughout the day? Set a watch over my mouth. Let my words be a life-giving fountain to all of those people that I will be speaking to and maybe even send a word of forgiveness, blessing, encouragement to someone today. And the Lord bless you as you do so. 